In this video, I'm going to show you why I moved my newsletter over to Substack and how my process has changed with that. I'm going to give you a tour quickly of the Substack interface. So I'm not going to tell you exactly where I came from. You can probably guess within a few guesses as to what newsletter provider I was using. But ultimately, there were three reasons that I decided I had to move somewhere and Substack was the right place. So the first thing that kind of pushed me over the edge was cost. So Substack is totally free. Uh, there's absolutely no fees to use the service as a provider. I can have as many subscribers as I can possibly get and I don't pay a penny to Substack. If I do decide to monetize the newsletter at some point, it's gonna cost me, um, it doesn't actually cost me anything to monetize it. All it means is that when someone subscribes to it and pays, a percentage of that goes to Substack and that's kind of how they make money. Whether that's sustainable, I don't know. I hope it is. <laughs> but uh, for me personally, free is great. And then if I ever do decide to monetize it, then I'm not actually out money. I'm just giving a percentage of it to them, which for me is okay. With my previous provider, who I'm not gonna name, it was a totally different story. Basically, I had to pay a monthly fee to use the service in the first place. As I gained subscribers, I started paying more. So as the newsletter grew, I actually started paying more every month to them uh, for the service of using it. I had to pay for a custom email domain that was five bucks a month through Fastmail. And I had to pay for some file hosting for the images that I put in the newsletter. So all this added up to 20 to $25 per month to run this newsletter, which again, doesn't make me any money. And I don't know about you, but I don't have VC funding. So the idea of me gaining users and losing more and more money with each user isn't that appealing to me. So Substack's completely free offering was much more appealing for me. Another thing that's really bothered me about email newsletters in general is how they're really locked to the inbox. I don't like the idea of writing something and having the canonical place to read it be someone's email app. It doesn't, I don't love it. And mine isn't really a read, like sit down and like read for 20 minutes sort of newsletter. It's more of a, here's some things on the web that you can enjoy. So it's a little different, but I like the idea of my stuff being more web native and Substack really gives me that. Now, all newsletters basically have a like link at the top that says like, click here to view in the web browser. But to me, that feels like kind of a hacky thing. It's a one-off page usually. It doesn't really feel like you're looking at a blog, for example. And with Substack, it really feels more like a blog that you're creating with an email delivery option. And so with Substack, uh, the emails go out. The normal way you subscribe is via email and that works great but I also have a URL. So there's a URL you can just go to on the web. You can see all of my posts. You can look at them in the web browser. They have kind of a blog-ish uh, display. Like if this was someone's blog, you wouldn't know any different outside of the idea that it looks like a Substack thing. So I like that quite a bit. I also like that you can subscribe to Substack uh, newsletters via RSS. So you can just go to anyone's main page. So like uh, birchpark.substack.com and you can just like copy that, paste it into your RSS reader and I'll say, oh, this is a standard RSS feed. Let me follow that. So you can follow it via RSS if you don't want to do the email thing. I really like that. I really like how it kind of straddles the line, I think better than anyone else between web and email. So I really like that. And thirdly, this was a huge change to my email process. I wanna show you, uh, I'll switch over to the screen share here, but I wanted to show you how I used to kind of format the email and how it was very inefficient and really fragile and really only worked for me and how it's changed with Substack and basically give you an idea of how Substack's admin interface works. If you haven't used it, if you wanna get going, uh, I'll give you kind of a quick preview. I'm not a complete expert at it. I've only been using it for a little over a month, but in that time, I've kind of gotten used to it and I like it. Uh, it's pretty decent. Um, it's definitely got some room to grow, but Let's take a look. So what we're looking at here is Nova. Uh, this is a text editor for the Mac, uh, but I also used working copy for the iPad and Visual Studio Code for Windows, depending on what device I was on. Uh, but basically uh, these HTML files here are all of the newsletters that I sent out in 2020. And so there's one for each day, each uh, Friday of the year, I should say. And inside each one, I have all of this HTML. And so all of this HTML had to be written every week. I had some forms like custom web forms that I created. I used uh, shortcuts on iOS and iPad OS to make this like much easier, but I had to do basically the actual HTML. And so here's like the video section uh, with everything. You can see, I kind of link to DigitalOcean uh, spaces where I actually like hosted the images for these. Um, so all of these came down here. I actually had to get these like thumbnails via YouTube DL, which is kind of a pain. <laughs> I had to uh, get music and I had a web form again that kind of created all of this. 
and then the links down here are the same thing. And then here's all my custom CSS. It's nothing crazy. Uh, I think if you've ever written CSS for email before, you know that CSS for emails is insane and it's shocking how little they support and like how different things work in different providers. So you never wanna do that if you don't have to. But if we take a look at the preview of this, this is basically what the newsletter looks like. Uh, it's gonna have like images. These are all links out to the sources. And then I had videos and music picks and you know kind of all this is nicely laid out and then all the links that i shared and so that's what it looked like in the end but again i was writing effectively html even though i was automating some of it away at the end of the day i had this html file and once i was done i copied it and pasted it into my newsletter provider let me show you how it works in substack now so I'm gonna switch over here to Substack. And like I said, this is just birchbark.substack.com. And so from here, you get kind of my logo, you get the Birchbark best of the web delivered to your inbox. So that's my tagline. And so I can subscribe here, or this is what I was talking about with the blog style uh, presentation. Let me read it first. So I click that and then I can just read all of my recent articles. And so they're all here, I can see all if I want, uh, but here's my most recent one, The Wild Death Throws of 2020. Uh, so if I go in here, I can kind of see uh, just things I wrote. And then I've changed the formatting a little bit to put links at the top with a little different description. I've got quotes and everything. Uh, I've got videos here. These are really nice to add. Um, and then I have art at the bottom and music picks. So. That's kind of how that works and there's related ones so I can get, oh, what's this one? And I can keep going and then I can subscribe from anywhere. It takes me back to this kind of subscribe page. So that's what I really like about kind of the result of Substack, but let me take you into the admin page so you can see how it works. So this is the Substack dashboard and it's pretty simple, uh, which is nice. Uh, it's not gonna be nearly as in depth as stuff like MailChimp or ConvertKit that have these like, elaborate analytics that you can look at. There's pretty basic stuff here and depending on your needs that may or may not be great. For me as somebody who's just doing something basic, it's really cool. It's really cool to be able to see my most recent issue and be able to see how many people viewed it, how many people received the email and the open rate, and then what were the most popular links in there. Uh, the most popular link was a link to Chris Lawley, who is a, a YouTuber who makes great videos about mostly iPad things and is a really great channel. You should check him out. So yeah, I can use that to see kind of what people find most interesting in them and kind of try to tune my content to that. Um, this is very basic analytic stuff. Uh, but then I also can see my number of subscribers changing over time. I can see the stats um, for how many people visit the website, uh, which actually isn't many at all. It's mostly people reading through email, but you know, that's fine. And there's some settings. And so I can change the name, the description. I can put some tags on here, um, you know, a logo. There's some more stuff here, but basically, um, yeah, there's all the things you can do here with styling so I can theme it. This is the theme that I have right now, but I could do kind of like a, let's do like a dark purple and like a, uh, let's do like a pink or that's, that's not gonna be contrasty enough. Let's do like yellow. So then I have like, this could be my theme and you can mess around with the fonts and stuff. So there's quite a bit here that you can do. I'm not gonna mess with that right now, but you can mess around with that to make it a little more like your own style. And then there's, there's some more stuff here. There's stuff for paid subscriptions, which I don't do, so I can't really tell you much about that. Uh, it links with your Stripe account, so you have to get a Stripe account if you want to uh, turn on uh, paid subscriptions. And uh, yeah, so there's some just some stuff here with like copyright stuff. And there's a ton of things here. We're not going to go into all of it, but this is where you set all that. What I want to look at real quick is the uh, posting interface. So I could do a new post, but I'm actually gonna, just gonna edit the one that I have publishing uh, tomorrow when I'm recording this, probably today when you're watching this, but or whatever in the future. But here's an article that I've gotten written. Um, I've got kind of the Birch Park issue 49, and then just an intro, I've got all these links. And so, I mean, this is just a WYSIWYG editor. Um, I can click on this and then I can change the URL to something else. I can change the text, uh, whatever I'd like that to be. It sort of does markdown. So like, for example, if I uh, go to a new line and then I do, I wanna do like an H3, I could do three of those and then hello. So that's an H3. I can of course change it through these as well. So um, whatever I'd like uh, works pretty well. But if you know markdown, you can do stuff like put do a quote. There you go, just with a carrot and then you are out of it. So yeah, if you know markdown, it's pretty easy. And if you don't, you can just use these controls and it works just fine.
There's a couple settings you can change on here. Uh, you can change if it's for everyone or just your paying subscribers, which again, I don't have that turned on, so I don't have it. Uh, you can turn comments on or off. And then there's a social preview. So you can say, here's what it's looking like. Here's kind of the start of the message. And then there's an image associated with it. So this is pretty cool as it looks at the images in your uh, email or in your post, and then you can choose which one you want to use. And so like, I kind of want to use this one. This one's kind of weird. <laughs> it's maybe going to get people interested, um, but there's that. And then you can actually just upload an image independent from what's actually in the post. So I'm actually going to save that. There we go. And then you can see the URL that's going to be there. Um, unlike uh, a lot of these other services, it's a very clean email. It's basically your a blog style uh, link, which I like. You can send a test. You can send a secret draft link. So this is kind of cool. This is a link that you can then share with someone and have them kind of read your post before you publish it to everyone. And then you can get feedback from them or whatever you want to do. And then before you publish it to everybody, you can get feedback from somebody. And if you're like, hey, I don't want them to see that anymore, reset the link, confirm, and now it's new. So there's only one link at a time, but that's a pretty cool feature. And then once you're ready to go, and I'm actually going to do this now, I'm going to publish... And then those kind of same settings we saw on the last page, it's for everyone. I'm not going to do comments. And then you can see that image. I can change it right now if I'd like. And then do I want it to be an email or do I want it to just be a web post? And I can choose which one. I always do the email and then I'm going to schedule it for later actually. So it defaults to tomorrow and I'll do 4 a.m. like always. So there we go. 4 a.m. tomorrow. It'll publish in 14 hours. Boom, there we go. And so that's scheduled to go tomorrow at 4 a.m. I can still edit it, I can still make changes to it, and it'll just save those changes. I can see it's scheduled up here, and I can cancel it if I'd like. But yeah, that's kind of how the dashboard works, the admin interface for Birchbark. They label it as beta. Um, it seems totally functional and works pretty well for me. Uh, but yeah, this is a, definitely a platform that is growing, that is evolving. Uh, that theming feature I just showed you a few minutes ago is just been added in the last couple weeks. So it's definitely getting new features as it, as it kind of grows and gets more users. But for me, it's been a great choice. And uh, hopefully this tour has kind of shown you whether it may or may not work for you. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you here next time. Bye-bye.